Hey everyone, welcome back to Integrative Psychonautics. I hope you're doing well out there. Uh, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about everyone's favorite topic, the most cheerful thing you've ever thought about, which is shame. And I'd love to give you a tool on how to relate to shame, how to think about shame, how to work with and deal with shame. Uh, and this is one of these things that I think is pretty obvious once you understand it, but it's kind of something that a lot of people don't know. I'm always telling my clients and it makes a huge difference. So if you struggle with shame or you notice some shame come up in yourself and you're wondering how to work with that, this would be a video you might wanna watch. So let's talk about it. Okay, so just for quick context here, uh, this is intended to be kind of a shorter video. Hopefully this won't end up being very long and it's really just intended to give you kind of one useful tool or point. So this isn't a structured video with a lot of different points in it. Uh, I could explain this in much more depth, but I wanna just kind of switch all of that up for just kind of a little more brevity here with a point. So quick context on why I'm talking about this. Uh, shame is a nearly constant theme with my clients and the work that I'm doing. Uh, not necessarily that I want to bring it up or that I think it's particularly relevant, but it seems to be a universal experience that my clients have and I'm sure that most of us deal with, right? Shame is part of the human experience and it can cause us a lot of suffering and a lot of pain and a lot of struggle and a lot of confusion and a lot of tension. And a lot of my clients just don't know what to do with shame. It's often the emotion or, or the experience inside themselves that they tend to be the most like, geez, what do I do with that? How do I deal with that? Even more than some of the big T trauma events that have happened in people's lives, it's the shame that people really, really struggle with. So in this video right now, I wanna deliver you a tool that I think is incredibly useful that I've been sharing with a lot of my clients and they're getting a lot out of knowing this. So this is what I wanna to convey to you. Uh, a lot of times when we are struggling with shame and that's kind of where we're hung up or, or you know what we don't know what to do with, the underlying assumption inside of the shame is some connection between who we are as a person, our identity and our behavior, something we did or didn't do, some way we acted, could have acted, should have acted, and you know, and how that behavior implicates who we are as a person, right? So the underlying assumption that often we have when we're dealing with shame is that, you know, sometimes it is I am my behavior, my identity is my behavior, and I think that that's something to really evaluate and question and challenge. Or the underlying assumption is at least that my behavior strongly uh, is connected to or overlaps with my identity. And so the tool I want to say here and kind of point out to you really simply is to encourage you to consider really separating out your sense of self from whatever your behavior is. And just think about that for a moment. What would it be like to really be clear about the difference, the distinction between your behavior and who you are as an identity, okay? Now, um, let me give some examples here just to kind of make it obvious, right? I mean, this, this is something people really struggle with and you might really struggle with. And this might be something you have to sit and chew on and think about and try on for yourself. And I would encourage you to do that. Don't take my you know word for it at face value. Explore this for yourself. But if you think about it, you know, what percentage of all the behaviors you do in a day, let's say, um, do you identify with, right? How many of the behaviors that you do, do you build an identity around, right? Do you, you know, am I, am I a water drinker? Is that who I am, right? No, I drink water. It's one of the behaviors I do. I, I wake up and get out of bed every day. I, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I, I put shoes on. Am I a shoe wearer? Is that my identity? Maybe for some of us, yes. But I think generally most of us would say, no, shoes are something I have. Shoes are something I use. They're not who I am as a, as a fundamental identity, right? And same with words. I speak right? I use words to communicate and to make things happen and to uh, do all kinds of interesting things, including entertain myself, right? Uh, am I a speaker? Is that my identity? You know, maybe for some people, again, it is. But for a lot of us, no, it's just a tool we use. It's a behavior we employ 
you know, in all kinds of different ways with all kinds of different intentions and outcomes, right? So I would encourage you to just really think about whatever it is you feel shame around, you know, and there, there's more there. There are more tools we could use to bring to shame, like separating out and understanding that a lot of times our behaviors are driven by our state and our emotions, right? And, you know, how regulated were we, you know, uh, what was our worldview at the time we took the action? How much sense were we? I mean, there's all kinds of tools we can use to really start to clarify and I think um, put shame in its proper place. In other words, not let it get out of hand and, and dominate our experience and, and really you know, impact our ability to experience well-being. Uh, but I think fundamentally, one of the best tools is really just to get really clear on the difference between our identity and our behavior, right? Now, in that, there's kind of just to add a little bit of a philosophical, spiritual, psychedelic twist on that, there is a giant question about, well, who who am I? What is my identity, right? And uh, sometimes you'll see in certain psychological literature, the idea that um, you know certain pathologies are built around not having a sense of self, not having a sense of identity. But I think if we're really being intellectually honest here and we really inquire into who we are, right? Um, I think that that's a very deep mystery. I think that's a fair way to put it. The self, the identity, who we really are at our core is mysterious by nature. It is deep, it's profound, it is uh, more than we think. And anytime we're starting to apply some sort of reductionistic label to our sense of self, we are absolutely narrowing down the scope of who we are and misrepresenting what we really are and who we really are, right? And so, that's something to consider when we're thinking about identity and behavior, right? Is how much more you are than any behavior you can ascribe to yourself, right? So maybe there are kind of patterns of behavior you could identify as inherently belonging more to you than say to other people, but is that really what defines you as you would be my question. So I hope that's a useful concept for you. Uh, let me know what you think. The idea again with this video is just to kind of make a quick, short little dive into a concept or tool and just kind of empower you. Uh, I realize shame is, in, like I kind of jokingly said in, in the intro, everybody's favorite topic. We all love to talk about it. In other words, everyone hates to deal with shame and it's nobody's favorite topic. But I do think it's useful to know where to go with that and what to do with that. So let me know what you think. Does this resonate? Is this helpful? Leave a comment down below if it is. It would mean a lot to me. Uh, and enough said for now. I'll see you guys in another video in the near future. Hope you're doing well.